Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you hear some sound effects in the background, that is my parrot, Vincent. She's an African Grey and if you'd like to know more about her, I have a video about her. Just search for that on my channel. All right, today I'm going to compare two bags for you. I'm comparing this Speedy 30 with this Terren MM. These bags, I hold them up like this, pretty comparable in size. So I think it's a good comparison to do. And there aren't a whole lot of videos out there on the Terren, so I thought this could help a few people out because I know it's a fairly popular bag. I'm gonna start with um, the store experience. So the Terren mine I purchased in store and I have videos about that experience. Um, I have the unboxing video which tells the story of how I went to three different stores in New York City when I was on vacation there last year to purchase this and I tried on um, all three sizes, the PM, the MM, and the GM just to be sure that the MM was the size I wanted and it was. I found the GM personally to be way too large. It felt more like a tote than a handbag, which I wanted. And for me, the PM was way too small. I am just not a small handbag kind of girl. So the MM was the perfect size. Um, there's also a BB size, which not even on my radar because I don't go that small. So the store experience, oh, and then the 30 I purchased from Fashion Files, so I did not have a store experience on that, but I still want to talk about it. Um, and the Speedy, I'm sure you know, comes in several different sizes. Um, there, there's so much, so many variations to the Speedy, that's not something I should go into here. But the 30 is the standard size that most people have. With mine, what I want to say about it is when you go in the store, you're able to try it on and everything, and they wrap it up for you, you get a big box that it fits in stuffed because this bag is not collapsible, foldable. Whereas the Speedy, and again, I haven't purchased one in the store, but from what I see from people's unboxing videos, the Speedy tends to come to you flat like the Neverfull does. I bought that one in a store and they fold those and put them in flat boxes. And I wish I had known at the time when I bought my Neverfull, you can request a box that fits it stuffed so that you have a box you could put it in if you need to, even though you're not supposed to store them in boxes because they need the air to circulate so they don't get moldy. Um, but it's my understanding that you can request the larger box for the Speedy at the store, whether they give it to you is up to the SA you happen to be dealing with. I made a purchase in store last week, and along with that purchase, I asked for a small little tiny dust bag to put one of my luggage tags in, and she refused to give that to me, so. I don't know what the big deal is, but yeah. And I had an issue where I bought a bandeau once and they don't usually give dust bags with bandeaus and I requested one and she gave me one, it was a different essay, but she was a little fussy about it. It's really annoying. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about the store experience. So let me give you the dimensions of these bags. We'll just start with that. They're very similar. With the Turan, I took a few different measurements. So the height, the shape varies. So the height from the center here, which is the highest point, to the base of the bag is 10 and a half inches, whereas the height from the corners, which are lower than the center, to the base is nine and a half inches. So there's a one inch difference right here. The width of the bag is 14, oh wait, 14 across the top, 14 inches from corner to corner here and then the base the width on the base and I measured from the bottom corners here that is uh, 10.75 so there's quite a difference there you've got an extra approximately inch and a half on the top on each side and then the depth I measured from corner to corner is five and a half inches I also me measured the handle drop so from inside, from here to here, is four and a half inches. The strap length, I'm gonna pull the strap out of the bag so you can see what it looks like. So this, the Turen comes with a crossbody length strap and the strap attaches, I'm gonna put it on for you so you can see what I'm talking about instead of me just talking about it. 
the strap here. You see it attaches to the D-rings on the end there. That strap is adjustable. It has five holes here. And on the longest setting, it's 46 inches. On the shortest setting, it's 42 inches. And the strap drop for the shoulder strap, I measured from here to here. That is 21 inches, okay? On the Speedy, the height, the measurements are more the same here. It doesn't vary as much. The height here is from the top to the bottom, straight up eight and a half inches, um, or here to here, eight and a half, no, eight inches. And the width from corner to corner is 11.5. The depth is seven. I also measured from the base to the corner where it starts to curve in that is five and a half inches. The reason I gave you that measurement is because a lot of people like to put um, bag organizers in their bags, like a felt organizer, and you don't want it to be taller than this because then it'll push out on the corners where it curves in. So you don't want it to be taller than five and a half inches on a Speedy 30, on one of the canvas ones anyway. Um, on the Epi bags and the, I don't know about the Empreinte because I haven't had an Empreinte, but I had an Epi in my possession for about a day or two. You can see the video on that. There was mold inside, so I returned it. Um, that Epi Speedy was uh, 25, I think, 25 centimeter. This is a 30 centimeter. Just so you know, the Epis are actually bigger than what they say they are. Um, you can look at that video. I think I talked about the measurements in there. I don't remember exactly what it was there, but so I'm talking about canvas speedies today. Um, the handle drop on this bag is four inches here to here, and this is not the bandolier version. It's just the classic speedy, so I don't have a strap that I can measure for you that came with the bag. I do use, as I say in every video that I talk about the Speedy, I use my Trevi GM strap and I attach that to the, the square rings on the handles here, like so. And I carry it around like that because I'm a shoulder bag girl. I should have dished out the extra money for the bandolier, but I, for me, just my personal preference. I'm not a fan of the strip of leather on the bandolier. I think it makes it look too much like luggage and less like a handbag. So I prefer the classic model. Um, not, not judging you if you prefer the bandolier. I would love to have the strap. That's why I do this. You have to be careful if you do this that you're not pulling out the stitching under here and putting stress on that. So every time I wear this, I check it and make sure. So far I've been wearing it like this for months and months and it's been just fine. I've had some other people tell me they do the same thing and theirs has been just fine, um, but I'm not responsible if yours isn't just fine if you do that. You have to take care of your own bag. So let me take this strap off. Just wanted to show you what I do in case you wanted to know about that option. All right, since I already talked about the strap drop, I'm taking my crossbody strap off the Turin. Let's talk about that first. So I said that on the Turin, the strap drop here is four and a half inches and on the Speedy it's four inches, which sounds really close, but look how much bigger the Turin straps look. And I'm gonna show it to you on my arm. And I, I measured it twice just to be sure those measurements was, were correct because that does not look like just a half inch difference, does it? No. But watch this, but it is, because I measured it twice. So here's what this one looks like on my arm. And you see, uh, well, it's actually hard to see, so I'm gonna, because I'm wearing black. So I'm putting my hand under there so you can see the strap drop there. And that's all the way up to my elbow. And I am not skinny. And here is how it looks with the Turin, there's quite a difference. It is so easy to get the Turin strap over your arm. I have trouble, especially if I'm wearing a coat, getting the speedy strap over my arm. I can do it, I just have to kind of hold my coat cuff in place and pull it over my arm. So keep that in mind. A lot of people have trouble with that because that's made for thin arms, I guess. Let me show you each of them side by side. Let's do that first. So, 
Let's see here. So here are the two. I'm just going to be kind of behind them here and talking under them. Um, so again, they look very similar there. The sides together, they look very similar. Um, the Speedy has more room at the top here, whereas the Turin tapers in. And I'm going to show you the bases together, or side by side. So the Speedy looks quite a bit larger. And let's see, as far as depth there, yeah, you can tell that it's the Speedy is wider. The Speedy definitely holds a lot more. Okay, let me go over construction real quick. Both of them have top handles. Okay, clearly. The chaps are different on them. The chaps on the Speedy are more pointed. Um, on the newer Speedies, if you were to buy a newer one, the chaps are puffy. They have the metal grommets and they have these large square rings and they have rolled handles. There are similarities and differences on the Turin. These chaps are more rounded with the point. The metal pieces here are much thinner, which makes it a lot more difficult to attach a bag charm there. Um, let me show you. I have this little clay, my denim clay. If I attach it to the Speedy, it's very easy. There's plenty of room on that D-ring to get the clip on there and hang it, and it looks just fine. If I wanted to attach the same piece to the Turin, it's going to be more difficult because those rings are thinner, so it's harder to get the clip through. You have to kind of, what I've started doing, because I don't want to scratch the leather with the point of the clip, is I kind of push the handle um, over, like towards me in this case, to make a little more room on the ring on that side. And then I can, I'll do it this way. Then I can slide that through and it just fits. You have to push it to get it through. And then you can hang it there. And you see how tight that is. There's just not a lot of room there for that clip to go through. So if you're gonna put bag charms in that spot in the Turin, if you're a bag charm person, you've gotta be careful what you're doing so you don't scratch the leather. Unless you don't care about scratching the leather. Next up on the construction of this, the Speedy is made of one continuous piece that goes all the way around, which means that on one side, the Louis Vuittons, which are here and here, are right side up, and then on the other side, they're upside down. And then you have the pieces on either end here. On the Turin, it's made of two pieces of canvas. So it's right side up on both sides. So you have this side, and then you have this side, and then they wrap around the bottom and they meet in the middle and there's a seam there, and there are seams on the sides with the piping. You have some tabs on the Speedy. So on the zipper pull, it looks like this, and it has this hole to put your um, lock and then this little tab has a hole to attach your lock, so you would put it here like this to keep your bag locked and secure. I never use that. I don't carry the lock on my bag. I carried it for a while on this loop, and then I noticed that it was pulling the leather and um, making the hole larger and more oval-shaped instead of round, so I took it off and I don't keep it there anymore. And then on this side, there's a tab that says Louis Vuitton Paris, made in France. Yours might say made in USA or Spain or wherever it's made. Um, so those are the only extra tabs on this and it has this zipper closure that goes the full length of the bag. There's no opening on either end. It keeps the bag completely closed. On the Turin, you have several extra tabs. You have the one in the center here at the top that says Louis Vuitton Paris. Pretty sure my bag was made in the States. Um, oh, going back to the chaps for a second, there is no rivet here like there is on the Speedy. 
but this tab has the two rivets to keep that in place and those rivets say Louis Vuitton. It's only sewn on the top. Um, on the Speedy, you have a little V shape. Sorry, you have a little V shape that keeps it sewn in and then it's sewn into the seam there. Um, this is only sewn into the outside. It does not fold over. It's glazed on the top, as you can see, because it would be a raw edge otherwise. It's also glazed on the sides there. Um, there's no tab on the back. And then on the ends, you have these tabs. Those are sewn in the triangular pattern. There, it keeps focusing on my face. So that's sewn in the triangular pattern and that has the little indentations around the outline. The other one, of course, is the same. And you've got the Vachetta piping that only goes down to the seam here. Um, let's see. Oh, and then on the construction, because of the way that's sewn together where you don't have a side piece of canvas, it's just all one piece, the bottom is folded here. I have never had any problems with the folds. I haven't had any cracking. I've heard on, I think it was on the Facebook Louis Vuitton Addicted group, that some people were having corner cracking issues there. Uh, I I don't know why, um, if it's a defective bag or if their bags are getting more use and getting banged up more. Mine sits in my closet most of the time, unfortunately, because it is a treasured piece of mine. It's very special. It was a gift for my boyfriend when we were in New York last year. And so I really baby this one. Whereas my Speedy, I, this is an everyday bag for me. I carry it probably more than anything else. And this thing is a workhorse. I can beat it up and not worry about any issues. Um, this one I, I'm very careful with because I want to preserve the shape, the pleats, the vachetta. I'll talk about some of that in a minute. But that's one of the known issues with the Tyrannus, those corners uh, cracking. Again, I have had no issues at all. As you can see, mine look perfect. They look like brand new. Oh, also one thing on the bottom, um, you see how the pattern does not line up very well. One of the things about Louis Vuitton that people hear is that the patterns line up when you have seams and they line up on the top. And mine does line up pretty well on the top, very well actually, but the bottom is crooked. And that's one of the reasons that I went to three different stores trying to find my bag is because I was looking at the bottom and they were all crooked. I have seen a couple of people on Facebook, on the Facebook group, say that and show pictures of their bag where it's um, lined up. I've maybe seen one or two pictures of that, but it's my understanding that most Terrens do not line up on the bottom. Maybe I'm wrong, but every one that I looked at in New York did not line up. Um, and I've heard that issue from other people. All right, those are the extra tabs on the back. Oh, and the zipper pull. So that's what the zipper pull looks like. It's one piece, it's not two. Some Louis Vuitton bags have two pieces that are kind of looped around. This is just one, and it's, it's one long piece that's then folded in half and sewn together and glazed um, and has the stitching. You can see. And this also has a zipped closure that goes from end to end, so there's no room for water or dirt or anything to get into the bag. All right, one more thing I'm gonna talk about on the outside is the pleats. So clearly, one of the big differences in these two bags is the design. So the, the Speedy is more plain, and then the Terrain, has some design elements. It has that shape where it tapers in, um, it tapers in at the top, it's wider at the bottom. It has the vachette on the sides, the extra tabs that are for decoration more than anything else. And it has the pleats, which is one of the really big things that I love so much about this bag because I am a sucker for a bag with pleats. I think it looks so feminine and lovely. So the way these are done, and the pleats are on the front and on the back, is they've sewn the material together here, and then it's left open to give that nice pleat there. Um, one of the things about this bag, 
that I think and would recommend you do if you're getting a Turin or have one. I don't stuff this bag more than right about here at the bottom of the pleats, whereas the Speedy, I can just stuff it full of things and not worry about getting it getting misshapen so much. Again, I wouldn't put a bag organizer that's taller than this, but uh, otherwise I, I just stuff that thing up and, and keep it full. This one, for several reasons, I don't stuff beyond that point. Reason number one is if I have things inside the bag that are pushing out on these outer pieces, like the outside of the pleat, I feel like that will squash the pleat outward and could misshape the pleats. So I'm careful not to do that. On my Trevi GM, the pleats are very misshapen. And that's why I'm so careful with this one because I don't want it to end up looking like my Trevi, which is not very pretty. Um, and then the other reason you don't want to stuff it that high, I found this out after I purchased the bag, is because when you do have it stuffed and zipped, then this tab starts to curl out because it's being pushed out and these tabs start to curl out. And you can see this one sticks out a little bit. When it was brand new, it was, went straight down. Um, I have it stuffed right now and I'll show you what I've got in there. Um, so it's just this thing so that it's a roll of tissue paper. I'll show you in a second. But it goes right about here and it doesn't go all the way to the corners. It's probably from here to here or so in the bag. So it doesn't, it, it lets it keep the shape where it doesn't just sink in on itself when I have it sitting on the shelf. Um, but it doesn't stuff it so much either that it is overstuffed. So I would like to prevent messing up the pleats and prevent these from curling out because that's one of the notorious issues with this bag is those three tabs curl out. And I don't know if it'll work, but that's what I'm doing. So far it's doing pretty well, so we shall see. I've had it for almost a year and I'll do a one year review on it in March, but that's it so far. I'm gonna pause this and take out the stuffing I have in these two bags. Oh, and let me show you, since I showed you that one stuffed, the Speedy I have stuffed to the top. So that's one of the differences in these bags. I'm gonna pause this and come back to you to show you the insides. One of the other things about stuffing this bag, I said I had this roll of tissue paper. This is what it looks like. It came in another bag and I just used it. it came in a non-LV bag. Um, so I have that sitting in the middle when I have it stuffed. So here you can see, well, that, that looks like it stuffs the whole bag because it's bigger because of perspective. But what I do is I put that in the base and it doesn't go all the way to the edges. So what I do is I take little wads of tissue paper and I put those into the corners. I don't want to overstuff the top. I do want to keep the bottom corners stuffed. And you can see the reason for that. You see this dimpling here? It doesn't look like that when you first buy the Turin, but that's another one of the issues with this bag is those dimples develop over time. The reason for that is because the bottom of the bag is so soft and squishy. You can see how it just folds into my hand. There's not a ton of structure down here. So the top of the bag being wider and being heavy because it has all the hardware and the handles up here, um, gravity takes over and it just kind of sinks in on itself when it's sitting on something, when it's sitting on a shelf or when you're out and you put it on a table or something. So because of the shape and structure of it, those corners dent. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's natural for this bag to do. It doesn't bother me that much, a little bit, um, but I keep the corners stuffed the bottom corners stuffed when I have it sitting on the shelf in storage. All right, let's show you the inside of these two bags here. Here is the inside of the Turin. I hope that color is coming across. It's a textile interior. And at first I thought it was a dark brown, but it has this little bit of a burgundy tone to it. It's really pretty, really, really pretty. Um, this has the Louis Vuitton Paris tag on it and underneath that is these two slip pockets here. Um, I have something in there. What is that? Oh, just a note from a while 
a while ago. The um, date code is in, let's see here, of those two pockets, it's in this one. So the date code tab is there. Let me show you what it looks like. This bag was made in 2017. So this is the 2017 date code. There you go. So you can see the font and the spacing and the size of the tab and all that stuff. And then on the other side of the bag is one big slip pocket here. So there's no zippered pocket in the Turin. And then on this side is a little D-ring attached to a Vachetta tab. The lining is not attached to the bag like it is in the Speedy and the Neverfull. It's something where, I'll just show you, something where you can just pull the lining out, right? Um, that was something that I noticed in my Trevi. The lining is not attached in that one either, and that lining is smaller than the Trevi itself. And that's one of the reasons I haven't been able to get the shape back into the bag because I can't stuff it enough for it to stuff out the canvas. It only stuffs the interior, which is smaller. This one, the interior is the same size as the bag. So I don't have that issue. I can stuff this and get the canvas to be in place. On this other side is the made in tag. And pull that out and show you. So this one is made in the USA, which is why it didn't say made in France anywhere else. And yeah. So that's what the inside of the Turin looks like. Let's look at the Speedy. You probably already know what this looks like because they're all pretty much the same. On the Damier Venn Speedy that I have, the interior is red. Um, I have some pen marks because this was a used bag. On this side, there is a D-ring attached to these little chap things and the uh, rivets. And those are the other side of these. So those rivets say Louis Vuitton, and then on this side you have the slip pocket. I'll pull that out so you can see it better. That's not attached except right at the top under the zipper, and it has this leather piece that opens up. And mine is an older style bag, so it has the, the um, kind of plasticky lining coating on the interior of the pocket. The date code on this bag is underneath the pocket. I believe it's like that on all speedies. My date code is right here. There you go. And I just watched a video from Grace in her handbag and she has a speedy that is authentic where the date code is on the other side. So that is something to keep in mind if you are looking at a Louis Vuitton Speedy, that it can be on both sides. It's usually on the side that mine is on though. And that's pretty much it with the inside of the Speedy. Um, these bags have been referred to as black holes. <laughs> uh, the way that the lining is done here, like I said, it's attached to the canvas. It's like, it's, it's just the other side of the canvas. Um, it's got some thread work in there from the chaps on the other side and the edges look like this where they have this binding tape over them um, which isn't actually tape it's just a strip of fabric and I forget what it's actually called because binding tape is not the right word so this holds a lot more than the Turin because you don't want to stuff the Turin or overstuff the Turin um, I'm going to show you now the stuff that I put in my Speedy and then how it would fit in the Turin. Okay, let me show you what I keep in my Speedy, which is my everyday bag. And I, can, I think I can fit everything in here in both bags, but it's a little different. So here I have a pochette accessoire, and I put that up against the back of the bag and up against one side. And I'll show you once everything is stuffed in how that looks. Here's my toiletry 15. I put that right up against the pochette accessoire, my mini pochette. And then I put in my Sarah wallet. There we go. 
and that takes up the width of the bag like that okay so everything's there that's pretty much the width um, then on the space that's left on the other side I put my little mini um, agenda PM which I stand up and then I put plays and I sit those in like this and then I put my camera which I have in a Henry Bendel dust bag and then my glasses I just kind of lay on top and then I take my Louis Vuitton monogram shawl put that in on top of all of that because I always carry a scarf with me here's what the bag looks like um, no organizer I haven't been using my bag organizers I just kind of like it like this this has enough stuff in it it's packed so well that I don't get a lot of sag on the bottom um, so that works for me and you can see there it's a little bit of sag not too much it's stuffed pretty much to the top there it is I'm gonna take the scarf out and show you what it looks like inside so there's how it looks pretty full of stuff there so let me take all this out and then I'll put it in the Turen to show you that. All right, Turen is empty right now. I'm going to put in my pochette accessoire, my toiletry 15, and my Sarah wallet. And that fills the width. So what I don't have in there is my mini pochette, which is where I keep my keys. And then I'll put in my PM agenda, except that I don't want to put that standing up over here because the corners are going to push out the pleats. So I'm going to move that over and stand it up like that up against the front edge of the bag where there's more space. And then I'll take my clays and I'm gonna stand, no, they can lay down. I don't have to stand them up. My camera, I can fit into the back corner there. So that's what that looks like now. There's still a little space there. So in that little space, I can put a pair of glasses, sunglasses, and then I can put my other pair of glasses like standing up or on top of something. There's not really room for my mini pochette, so I guess I can keep my keys in one of the slip pockets on the side. And I can put my phone in there too. And what am I missing? My shawl. So here's the thing about the shawl and what I've got in here now. Let me show you, that's how it looks. So everything in the bag now, my agenda goes up to right here but it's not pushing up against anything. It's, it's got some room to move around so it's not squashing the pleat. Everything else in the bag is no higher than right here. Okay, so that's what I was saying about not wanting to stuff it higher. Sunglasses, however, one of the cases sticks up here but it's in the middle of the bag so it's not gonna push out on the pleats. Now there's not a lot of room left to put a scarf. I mean, I can definitely fit it in there. There is room to put it in there but then it's taking up the top of the bag and if I zip it, and I tend to leave my bags open anyway, but if I zip it, it's really full and I'll take the scarf out and show you the difference. You see how puffy the bag is out here? So it's pushing out on those pleats and it's also pushing out on this tab some. The tab is coming away from the bag a little bit. I want to avoid that. So I'm gonna take the scarf and show you the difference. You see how it's not as poofy now? It's more squishy in here. And uh, the tab, it's hard to see because the handles are in the way where you can't really see the tab, but the tab is flush up against the bag now. It's not being squished out. If you have things on the sides of the bag here, they can push out and push these tabs out. And personally, I want to avoid that so the tabs don't curl out. So that's what fits in the bag and what doesn't fit in the bag. So clearly the Speedy holds more and I could fit more in there than I had in there. It was pretty full, but I could still fit a few more things in there if I really wanted to. Whereas the Turen does not hold as much. 
Um, even though they appear to be pretty comparable in size, you can carry a lot more in the Speedy. I'm gonna show you next some modeling shots here. Okay, the Speedy can be carried in two ways, the classic Speedy. You can hand hold it like so, or you can put it over your arm like so. One of the things that happens with this bag when you're carrying it on your arm is that these corners tend to dent in. I'm gonna show you with the Trevi strap just for kicks here because this is how I carry it. And I don't have a measurement on this strap, but I think it's 20 something inches. Um, so this is how it looks on me at that length. It fits right in the curve of my waist here. So that's a really good length for me. And I just hang my arm over it like that. You can swing it around behind you like that. I don't have anything in it right now, so it hangs a little weird that way. But that's how it looks. The Turen you can also hand hold like so, or put it over your arm like so. And you can uh, not put it over your arm unless you have very thin arms, which I do not have. It is not a shoulder bag otherwise. The strap on here is made to be a crossbody strap. I don't wear crossbody bags, but here's how it looks. I'm 5'3", by the way. So there it is. It's since they attach, since the clips attach to the edges, it's pretty wide there. So the strap goes away from your body. Whereas like on that one where it attached to the handles, it kind of hugs your body and come back in, comes back in if you have a crossbody bag like that. So that's how that bag looks crossbody. How I wear it when I don't have it on my arm is as a shoulder bag like this. Now it sits pretty low. It's way down at the bottom of my hip here, the top of the bag. But I've learned to not mind that so much. Um, one thing about this bag, when it falls on you or hangs on you, I said that the corners of the Speedy kind of dent in. And you'll see that on some pre-loved bags. If you look at those where the corners are dented in, that's what that's from. Um, but you can always stuff the speedy out and fix that. But this bag tends to conform to your body, so the corners will curve in, it'll kind of hug you uh, like that. So when you are looking at the top of it, it's gonna look curved like that. I have not had any issue with that being a permanent thing. I just stuff it back out when I take the bag off and it, reach, it takes its shape again. So that has not been a problem for me. Um, with the Vachetta, one thing that I do too, just notice this, is when I'm using the zipper pull, I tend to hold it down here at the metal piece rather than on the Vachetta. Over time, that'll darken from the oils on my skin. So I try to avoid that by just holding the, the metal part of the zipper pull and pulling it that way. Also, when I'm carrying this bag, I always have the strap out because I want the, the strap and the other Vachetta on the bag to get the same patina. So if I'm carrying it on my arm, what I'll do is just loop the strap around like this. So like this, that's how I carry it. I'll turn that around so you can see what it looks like on the other side. So then it gets the even patina. So if you are considering the Speedy or the Turen and you're trying to choose between the two, watching my video, you're probably thinking you should go for the Speedy because it holds more and it doesn't have so many issues with the tabs and with the corners and all that. Um, but here's the thing, here's my recommendation if you're trying to decide. If you are just starting your Louis Vuitton collection, probably go with the Speedy because everybody needs a Speedy. They are just the perfect little handbag. Um, it's classic piece, it's never gonna go out of style, it's gorgeous, it holds a ton, it's lightweight, all the things I've talked about. You probably won't have problems with it, they're very well made. However, if, whether you're starting your collection or not, if you have any Louis Vuitton or not, if this is the bag that you think is more beautiful and this is the bag that you want and you feel like you get the speedy and you're still gonna want this bag, get this one first. Or if you already have other bags in your collection and you already have a Speedy, um, or maybe you have other Louis Vuitton bags and you don't have a Speedy yet, 
but you really love this bag, get the Turin. The thing about this is speedies are everywhere. Lots of people have them. Not as many people have the Turin. I do see them around in Houston, but not very often. Um, so you'll have a bag that fewer people have, and that's important to some people. Um, it is a bag that a lot of people use as an everyday bag. So if you go to the Louis Vuitton Facebook group, you'll see a ton of people. Um, it gets talked about fairly often there. I see a lot of posts about this bag and asking for recommendations and should I get this? Should I get this or the Speedy or other bags? Um, I always recommend the Turin. I almost always recommend the Turin unless they need something more like the Speedy. <clears throat> but it can be carried more ways so it's more versatile because it has that strap. Now you could get the Speedy with the bandolier strap. So that's you know, another option that would negate what I just said. But this bag is gorgeous. It's feminine. If you take care of it like I am taking care of mine, hopefully you won't have the issues with the tabs curling. Now again, I haven't used this bag every day, so I, I think because of that partly, I don't have the tab curling, but I'm pretty sure that that has to do with how I store it too and how I'm really careful about not overstuffing it. So if you don't carry as much as I carry, because I carry a lot, um, this would be a great bag for you. If you're trying to decide on the sizes, the PM is quite a bit smaller than this, and the Terrens are smaller inside than they look outside because you can't stuff them as much unless you don't mind the tab curling. Um, the GM, again, I thought was huge. I'm not a small person. I thought it looked huge on me, so that I would recommend the MM size for just about anybody. See if you can find them to try them on or at least look at the dimensions and compare that to other things you have um, if you're trying to decide on the size. So yeah, I mean the Speedy is just a classic bag. If you don't have one and you're into Louis Vuitton, you probably should have one. I thought that I would not want a Speedy. I was not a Speedy girl. I've said in another video a long time ago that the only reason I got a Speedy was to carry agendas or to get one that my GM agenda would fit in because they do fit in here. Um, so I got it so I could carry that bag. And I mean, that was literally the reason I bought that bag. And I just have fallen in love with this purse. It's my favorite purse right now as far as everyday carrying. So I highly recommend the Speedy. But if you're looking for something a little different, I highly recommend the Turin. So I don't know how helpful that is, but hopefully the whole video gives you a little more information. And um, yeah, and the Speedy is available in lots of different patterns. It has all the canvases and stuff. The Turin is only available in monogram. So if you don't like monogram, maybe it's not the right bag for you. Um, but I love both of these bags. This one is extra special just for sentimental reasons because of how I acquired it. Um, that's about it. I don't know what else to say. So if you have any questions, please let me know below. And I always answer everybody in the comments. So let me know and I'll get to you within a day or two, usually faster than that. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell notification icon to get notified. And follow me on Instagram if you're into that. I am Autumn Beckman there too. Have a fantastic day. Bye.